All right, today we're going to begin 1.5, which covers a wide range of concepts. We will be looking at determining whether a function is even or odd from its graph or from its equation. We'll be looking at finding the intercepts of a function, as well as determining when the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. We'll also be looking at local and absolute extrema of a function and the average rate of change. Okay, so a lot going on in this particular section. All right, let's begin with the concept of even and odd functions. And I'm going to start off with some illustrations here. Uh, you could follow along if you click the link. Let's do the even functions GeoGebra link in the top right here. We'll open that up. And it's going to take us to this applet. And what we have in this applet is we have a function f of x that is an even function and we can manipulate some of the points on this function to change the look of the graph but no matter how we move these points it's always going to remain an even function so if you drag any one of these white points it's going to adjust the graph so that the function remains even okay and what I'm hoping you're noticing is that no matter what, this function is always going to be symmetric with the y-axis, right? There's always symmetry with the y-axis. That's how we can tell graphically that it is an even function. All right, now algebraically, here's how we can tell that it is an even function. If I plug a value of x into the function, it gives me a y value, which is represented with f of x, right? So plugging x in results in f of x. If I were to plug the negative of that x value, so just the opposite x value, notice how I'll get the same y value, which is represented by f of negative x this time. So what this is showing is that in an even function, f of x results in the same thing as f of negative x okay so let's put that into our notes right a function is even if it's symmetric with the y-axis and algebraically that means f of negative x should give me the same thing as f of x okay now let's look at an odd function. Click the second link there. Now you gotta get out of your writing tool first, hit done. Open that link up and this applet behaves much the same way. Here we have the function f again, but this time f is going to be an odd function. And no matter where I move my points, I always have the same symmetry. This is always an odd function. Okay, notice what type of symmetry I have. There's symmetry in this graph with the origin. Okay. Now, algebraically, if I were to plug x into the function, I get f of x, the y value out. But when I plug negative x in, there's where f of negative x is. So notice they're not the same value. Instead, they're opposites of each other. Okay? f of x and negative f of x. One's positive, one's negative is basically what we're showing here. Okay? So that's algebraically how we can tell that we are odd. Let's put that back to our notes. To be odd, we have to have symmetry with the origin. And this time, if I were to evaluate the function f with negative x, it's going to give me the negative of if I had evaluated with positive x. Okay. All right, so looking at the graphs below here, Let's consider these are all three functions. 
Well, are they even, are they odd, or neither even or odd? Okay, the first one on the left there, it's graph of a parabola. There is no symmetry with the y-axis. There is no symmetry with the origin. So this is neither even nor odd. Uh, next, in the middle, that graph appears to be symmetric with the y-axis. So that is an even function. And then the third graph on the right, there's definitely symmetry with the origin. So this is an odd function. Okay. Now let's do this algebraically. Here I have the equation f of x equals 5x cubed minus x. And without graphing it, I want to determine algebraically whether it is even, odd, or neither. And this is where these rules come into play. All right. Remember, if you are even, we just we just saw from the applets that um, evaluating the function f with a negative x should give me the same thing as if I evaluated with positive x. And if it were odd, evaluating with negative x should give me the opposite as if I evaluated with positive x. All right. So either way, we're going to begin this process by trying to find f of negative x. Okay which this requires you to have a really good understanding of, of function notation. F of negative x in this case means to find five times the negative x cubed minus the negative of x. Notice I'm using parentheses when I evaluate the function with negative x here, okay? I have parentheses around um, anywhere I, I inserted negative x into the function. That's very important, okay? Now, simplify this with order of operations, okay? Um, if I take the negative of x and I cube it, that's going to remain negative, right? But now I'm going to think of it like this. Okay, and you might not think I've done anything there, but uh, technically I've, I've, I've done the cubing, right? Negative of x raised to the third power would lead to negative x cubed. And then at the same time, I'm going to say that subtraction by negative x is the same as addition of x. Okay, then lastly, 5 times negative x cubed, I can say that that is negative 5x cubed. And that's as simplified as that function gets. And once we get here, we, we just want to make a comparison with the original function f of x. Okay, I want you to notice that this result is not the same as f of x, right? So this is not an even function. Instead, this result is equivalent to the negative of f of x. Negative f of x just means you're just changing the signs on each term of the original function. So since it's the opposite, right, negative 5x cubed plus x is the opposite of 5x cubed minus x, we are going to say that f of x is an odd function. Okay. All right. At this point, you have your first opportunity to practice here. Um, in this particular practice problem, you are given several graphs and you are able to um, make sure you're out of your writing tool. So hit done and you can drag each one of these graphs under the proper label, whether it's an even function, an odd function or neither. So I want you to pause the video and do that yourself and then start the video back up and you can check your work with mine. Okay.
All right, now moving on to the intercepts of a function. This probably is not a new concept to you. Um, the x-intercept of a function would be the x-coordinate of any point that's located on the x-axis of the graph. And if you are a point located on the x-axis, that would mean your y-coordinate, your y-value equals zero. Uh, y-intercepts are just the opposite. Y-intercepts are the y-coordinates of any point located on the y-axis of a graph, which would mean that's when your x-value equals zero, your x-coordinate, okay? So notice in uh, the graph here, there are three x-intercepts. I would say they are located at x equals negative one, uh, one-half, or 0 0.5 and 2. And then notice there's only one y-intercept, which would be at y equals, um, by the label there, y equals 2. Okay. And um, I want you to notice that for this to be a function, you can only have at most one y-intercept. If you have more than one y-intercept, you wouldn't be passing the vertical line test and therefore you would not be a function, okay? All right, now you go to practice two and this time you are given a function's equation and you have to use the equation to algebraically find the x-intercepts. And I've given you some hints there as to how you can do that. So pause the video, try it yourself. And then when you're done, come back and check your work with mine. Notice that the y-intercept is the same as the constant from this function. That will always be the case.